we want to determine f prime of x from first principles if f of x is equals to 1 over x so if we want to use first principles uh, we have f prime of x being equals to the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x everything divided by h so that is what we are working with there here we just substitute in x plus h in terms of x here we just substitute in f of x as it is and we're dividing by h nothing hectic so let's go ahead and substitute so the limit as h tends to zero so we're gonna have one divided by x plus h that is f of x plus h minus f of x itself which is 1 over x and then divided by h right so the limit as h tends to 0 is going to be 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x everything divided by h right so let's go ahead and simplify the numerator we're going to have the limit as h tends to 0 of uh, so we want to give those two terms in the numerator the same denominator so we have x plus h multiplied by x to the power x minus x plus h right everything divided by h so let's go ahead and solve that numerator even further so x minus x that is zero and then we are left with minus h divided by x multiplied by x that is x squared and then h multiplied by x that is plus x h everything divided by h instead of dividing by h we can multiply by one over h so let's do that so we multiply in these by one over h instead of just dividing by h should be easy to see that h and h can cancel out if we cancel out h and h we are left with the limit as h tends to zero of minus one divided by x squared plus x h let's let h tends to tend to zero if we do that we're going to be left with minus one divided by x squared we are letting x tends to zero and this is f prime of x when we use first principles we can actually test it out and see if it is correct using the power rule so let's see if we were to use the power rule uh, we would write one over x as x to the minus one of which when we derivate we're going to get minus one x to the minus two which is the same as minus one divided by x squared so we are quite convinced that what we did using first principle is correct because we get the same answer using the power rule that is 8.1 five marks yeah it is a unique one most of the time we just have 2x squared plus 4 something very easy but this one it is quite unique but still doable right 8.1 let's move to 8.2 so 8.2 we want to 8.2.1 to be specific we want to determine d uh, dx of some square root of 4x to the 6 plus square root of 2x squared so what can we do here first of all let's just simplify this and write it in a format of which we're going to be able to derivate so d dx right i'm still carrying that d dx because i'm not derivating it i just want to rewrite that in a better way so square root is the same as uh, one over two right so let me change that to one over two um let me open this bracket first and then four x to the power six under the same square root this is the same as four x to the power six everything to the power f plus square root of 2 is square root of 2 there is nothing um, further we can do there 
I don't think we can further simplify it to anything else. Right. So d dx, um, I'm not yet ready to derivate yet. I'm still rewriting this. So 4x to the power, not 4x, but 4 to the power of is 2. And then x to the power 6 to the power half is 3. So we have 2x to the power 3 here, plus the square root of 2x squared. I think I am now ready to derivate. When I'm ready to derivate, I'm going to then say equals 2, because now I'm derivating. How do I derivate 2x to the power 3? I'm using the power rule. So the exponent multiplies the coefficient. We get 6x, and then we subtract 1. Right, that is the power rule. So 6x squared. And then plus the exponent multiplies the coefficient. So we have 2 square root of 2. And then we subtract 1. We are left with x. All right, let me check and see if I'm not making a mistake. But it all seems well. So let me see. 4x to the power 6 square roots. I get 2x to the power 3, that seems to be fine. Uh, here I don't have to change anything. And then I derivate, you know, 4 to the power a half is 2, x to the power 3, everything to the power a half, which will be, seems to be well. That is 8.2.1. Let's take a look at 8.2.2. So 8.2.2, we want g prime of x. If g of x, is equals to let's take a look 3x to the power 4 minus 4x squared plus 6 divided by x squared right so it's easy to see that we cannot take a common factor on the numerator that will cancel out this x squared because most of the time when we have something like this that is the approach but it doesn't seem like it's gonna work here but let me show you what we are gonna do right so g of x we are rewriting it right uh, is equals to uh, what do we have 3x to the power 4 minus 4x squared plus 6 multiplied by 1 over x2 right let me show you something 1 over x2 it is the same as x to the minus 2 All right so instead of 1 over x2 let's change it and write x to the minus 2 so x to the minus 2 yeah we can actually check if 1 over x2 is equal to x to the minus 2 uh, we can substitute 7 on both sides uh, when i substitute 7 on the left hand side i get 1 over 49 and then when i substitute 7 on the right hand side i get 1 over 49 so that that is true so now it's just a matter of multiplying all the terms with x to the minus 2. so let's go ahead and do that we still have g of x we're not yet ready to derivate so multiplying 3x to the power 4 by x to the minus 2 we're gonna have 3x and then we add the exponents 4 and minus 2. 4 and minus 2 is plus 2. So there we go. And then a minus 4. Again, we are adding the exponents. Minus 4, not minus 4, but 2 plus minus 2 is 0. So we have x to the power 0, which is 1. So x disappears there. Well, it doesn't disappear. Just cancels out. And then plus 6. We're just going to have plus 6x to the minus 2. Now I'm ready to derivate using the power rule. So g prime of x will be equals to the exponent multiplies the coefficient, we get 6x, and then we subtract 1. And then minus 4 is a constant, so the gradient of a constant is 0. We can forget about that. And then 6 multiplied by minus 2, that will be minus 12x, we subtract 1, so minus 3. Yeah, I think that is 8.2.2. Um, How many marks? Three and then 8.3, uh, quite an interesting equation. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it. The equation of the tangent f of x is equals to 3x squared plus bx plus c 
uh, x is equals to 1 is given by y is equals to 9x plus 9x minus 9 as you can see there determine the values of b and c so let's take a look and see how we can uh, solve that problem so we have the gradient at x is equals to minus 1 because we have the equation of the tangent the equation of the tangent y is equals to 9x minus 9 so this 9 is the gradient at x is equals to 1 so we can derivate f of x and equate to 9 and substitute 1 because when x is equals to 1 the gradient is 9 we're getting that from the equation of the tangent so if we go ahead and do that idea f prime of x will be equals to 6x plus b c is a constant so it's gone the gradient of a constant is zero so there we go uh, and then at x is equals to one the gradient is nine so the gradient is nine when x is equals to one so nine minus six is three so b is equals to three there we go we have the value of we have the value of b so f of x at this point we know that it is equals to 3x squared plus bx b is 3 so plus 3x plus c right we know that f of x is equals to that and then uh, what can we do we can substitute the point where x is equals to 1 okay so first of all we need to start by saying that y is equals to 9 and then in place of x we have 1 we want the coordinate uh, at that point because in order to find b we use the gradient at that point so we can find the coordinate and use the coordinate to find c so 9 multiplied by 1 that is 9 minus 9 that is 0 so when x is equals to 1 the y value is 0 right and then when x is equals to 1 the gradient is 9 yeah those two things can be corrected at the same time there's no issue there so if we substitute that point into f of x we're gonna have 0 being equals to 3 multiplied by 1 squared plus 3x 3 multiplied by 1 plus c so 0 is equals to 3 plus 3 plus c so 3 plus 3 that is 6 so minus 6 is equals to c so we have b and c f of x is equals to 3x squared plus 3x minus 6 let's see if this is correct we can substitute x is equals to 1 and see if we're gonna get 0 um yeah we will get 0 because we got the value of c using that fact so we should get 0 but let's just see um f at one is equals to three um one squared plus three one minus six okay this is you know that's fine um maybe let's check if the gradient is nine f prime of x is equals to six x plus b six x plus b what is b b is three right so when we substitute 1, we get 9. So the gradient uh, seems to also be valid. Um, yeah, so that is the answer to 8.3. Which question do you want me to do next? Let me know in the comment section. And I'm going to do it right now.